guys, you're listening to Tay Radio on this beautiful Friday. I'm your producer, Gigi Gonzalez. I'm your host, Brandon Gomez. I'm your co-host, Emma Romero. And I'm your co-host, Annalie Reyes. Make sure to tune in every Friday at 4 p.m. for our live shows. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Tay Radio Marin. Welcome back to Tay Radio, everyone. I'm your host, Annalie Reyes. And I'm your co-host, Santi Hernandez. And I'm your co-host, Ben. Today we will be talking about Tuscania Marsh uh, restoration. Tuscania Marsh is wetlands located along Summerfell <laughs> Canal area shoreline. And over the past few years, the tide of marshland at Tuscania has um, eroded, retreating as much as 200 feet, approximately three acres lost. Today, we will have Barbara Douglas and Lawrence come and talk about the Tuscornia March project. This project will provide critical education to the Canal neighborhood and the potential impacts of sea level rising within the community and how residents can contribute to the project. But before we begin, I, we would like to invite our guests to introduce themselves so our audience can learn more about them. I'm Barbara Salzman. I'm uh, president of the Marin Audubon Society. And uh, for a long time, we've had uh, protecting wetlands as a major focus of ours. And uh, we were fortunate enough, oh, maybe 10 years ago, to have, usually we buy uh, um, properties. We buy, we own about 500 acres of tidal marsh and, and uh, dike marshes along the bay. And uh, this particular marsh, Tiscornia Marsh, was donated to us about 10 years ago by Mary Tiscornia. And so we um, uh, had just been sitting there for a while and then the opportunity came up for us to, to uh, apply for some grant funds, which we did. We've now had two grants, one from the Marine Community Foundation and one from uh, Measure AA that was voted on a couple of years ago by uh, the people in the Bay Area. And so we're now using the money to develop a plan to uh, restore the marsh and um, uh, restore, build up the levee so it provides better flood protection for the community. I'm Lawrence, I'm a senior, I go to Branson and my main job with regard to, regarding the Scordia Marsh was just to be an outreach and public and spread, help spread awareness by creating a video documenting the importance of sea level rise into Scornia Marsh and how it will affect the canal community and the ramifications that it has for everybody. Thank you, Barbara and Lawrence, for participating in today's show. We'll be talking, we'll be right back talking about Tuscania Marsh right after this PSA. Wildfire season is here again. Pacific Gas and Electric will turn off electricity when there is extreme fire danger to reduce the risk of wildfires. Marin residents need to be ready in case of prolonged power outages. First, you can sign up to get notifications about plant power outages. These will tell you when the power outages are likely to happen and how long the power will be out. To receive notifications, text your zip code to 888777. Second, be sure to have a working flashlight, enough food and water for three days and other necessary items stored in your house and or your car. Third, learn about how to prepare to keep your family safe in case of a wildfire or extended power outage. See emergency preparedness information on the readymarin.org website. Please text your zip code to 888 Seven 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 to get on the alert system today. Listeners and watchers, we hope you found the PSAs helpful. We're, now we're going to talk about the Scorning March and the resources that we as a community can do to restore the wetlands in our local community, San Rafael Canal area. How about the Tuscornia March after knowing that the sea level is rising and how it's affecting the organism and civilians that lives around that area? I was wondering how do you guys plan to increase flood protection and provide transition zone for wildlife habitat and flood control? Well, I think I understood you. It's, it's hard in the car, but I am, uh, yes, we are uh, restoring the marsh because marshes are not only important for wildlife and for the bay, but they also provide good protection for the shorelines behind them. And so uh, this will, the, the marsh that we restore will protect the levee and we're also 
um, because the levy right now is quite low, uh, the, the piece that we own, as well as the cities. So we're going to be raising that up and uh, so that it's about the same height, a little bit higher than the uh, rest of the levy around San Rafael and um, uh, creating a, a transition zone that will help support the levy as well as be habitat for the wildlife. How will the community get um, affected by sea level rising? Well, the, the, the community will be, well, all of the people that live around the bay will, will, unless we do something about it, will be affected because the waters will rise up and especially during times of storm and high, high tides and uh, wind, uh, it pushes the water up into the upland. And so if, um, if the levees aren't, aren't of, a, of an adequate strength and height, uh, they can break, they can breach, it's called, and, uh, or they can be overtopped by the waters. And so your streets will all get flooded and, and the, some houses will be flooded. And even if the, even if the, the houses aren't flooded, uh, people will have difficulty getting around the streets because you can't drive through, you know, foot, foot deep water. So that's how it will affect everybody. Why is it important to, for the community to know about the Discordia March? Well, I, it, it's important for them to know about the project because it's going to be a great benefit to the people of the canal area and the whole community there. Um, so um, we, we need support and it would be really important for people to know what's going on so that they can support our efforts to, um, we'll have to raise more money to, um, uh, to protect them and protect the wildlife and um, um, create better habitat for everybody. I, I heard you saying that um, you guys are planning to raise up the levees. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, like, what if the level, the sea level does rise mm -hmm. and um, would there be a backup plan if, if it doesn't work for the rising the levees? Oh, uh, well, I think it, well, all right, a couple of things. Um, I think the rise, raising of the levee uh, would work. Uh, there may be a point way in the future uh, where sea level will rise higher than the levee will be able to protect, in which case then the levee will have to be raised, have to be raised up higher. But there are also some other, other weak points of the canal that will need to be addressed because the water will, you know, we, it, it's a matter of uh, patching up or raising up uh, with existing communities like this exist in San Rafael. It's a matter of raising up the, um, the, the, sh the, the shoreline, uh, either by a levee or some sort of flood wall or something, so the waters can't get in. So there's gonna have to be something done further up the canal also, but our project is one piece and it will, it will you know, be a, a protection for, uh, a piece of the protection that will be needed. We hope our TAFAM watchers or listeners did learn a little bit about Tasconia March Project. Next, we'll be playing a song by Yuk, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. The artist you were listening to was by Yuk. You can stream his music on Spotify at Yusaku Nakano. If you are or know a local artist, send your music our way via or DM at Te Radio Marin to be mentioned on our show. At Te Radio, one of our main goals is to have more youth engagement in our community. And I wanted to directly ask Lawrence um, but I know Santi could add on to Lawrence if she would like to. I was wondering what was your experience researching the Scornia March? What did you learn about it? And how did you end up being involved with the Scornia March um, research project? 
Um, personally, rescoring, researching, and learning about the Scorpion Marsh was pretty cool. Um, I had been there a couple times in passing. I had friends who lived over by there, and I'd go there periodically. Um, I think just learning about the Scorpion Marsh is super interesting. You know, I feel like it's a really beautiful place. When I went in there and took photos for the video that we're making, I just it's just such a beautiful place. This it's super picturesque, and I just feel like I learned a lot about you know, just understanding that there are certain issues that we have in this world that even though they may not affect you personally, they do in some form or fashion. And that's just what I've really taken away from this whole project with the sea level rise. And I just think going forward, I just think that it's super important that people develop a sense of empathy for those around them, even if there's something that doesn't directly affect them, just having the compassion and desire to want to solve problems that we encounter on a regular basis. And how did you get involved with the research project? Like, who did you contact to? Or did, it, did you do it on your own? Oh, so the way I actually got involved was that my school's community engagement coordinator, she's always sending out emails for opportunities. And I just happened to scroll through and this one popped up and I signed up and it just was kind of like that. It was just a connection. So I just think that you know, there's a lot of opportunities that are available for people. It's just about knowing where to find them that's important. I agree with Lawrence that opportunities open up a lot of learning experience uh, experiences. For us, with researching Tiscornia Marsh, we learned a lot more than, um, we, we learned a lot, we learned about sea level rising and we also learned how sea level rising affects the community, especially the canal community. I remember reading how um, the people that enjoy Pickley Park, the trail, and the, I think it's the Via Vista school, if there was flooding, you know, all of that would be shut down. And I also learned about how the impact flooding has on, you know, low, low, low income families, how that hits in a very different level than people who are in the middle class or, or in the, the rich class. So I got to learn that, which is amazing um, because then I, I, have, I have a way to talk with the community and get, the, and get them to know more about why it's important to get involved in organizations and support organizations, support um, programs. And for me, I've always been involved with um, the environment. I've always done work behind, you know, helping the environment. This was new for me, and I did not know about this Korean March. I didn't even know it existed until I did this internship. So to all the, our listeners out there, don't be afraid to get involved in programs. If you have the opportunity to do so, do it because you, you can help the community. You can do a lot of things, and you will learn and have so many experiences along the way. Thank you, Santi, for sharing. Um, I do have a question, like, what would be an example of youth being involved in the community um, relating to Tuscania March? You guys have any ideas besides researching projects? I think the internship is a perfect example because with the Tuscania March internship that Lawrence and I are doing, we, um, we got, we're, we're learning, we're doing research, but at the same time, you know, I think Lawrence mentioned that in the beginning of the, of the show is that we're creating a video, an informational video, promoting Discordia March and talking about sea level rising. And so we're doing a research and we're putting content out there for the community. So for, for the youth out there, you know, there are many internship um, programs out there about environment, about, you know, um, um, social justice and so many different things. So you just have to look and we you have to have that um, individual determination to go out there and ask and, and seek for um, organization, organizations as well as, you know, even today with just social media, you can, you know, if you know something about a certain topic, you, you, know, you can use social media platform to inform people about it. So it's, you can do a lot of things. I did hear you mention about a video that you guys do. I mean, you guys did, and I'm kind of interested in watching it. Where would I be able to find that? Like, are you guys gonna send it out to high school um, programs or like 
Instagrams. I know there's Instagram pages for high schools. I don't know if you guys are planning to send that out or what's your plan with that? So our video is still under production, but it will be up on YouTube and we haven't figured out exactly how we're going to send out the video, but the video that we're creating is for a meeting on October 21st. This meeting is going to be especially for Tiscornia March, promoting Tiscornia March, and this um, the video is going to be part of the meeting, so that's where our main focus is, but we do plan um, to be able to share it with others and have that information as well. Thank you. I don't know if Min has anything else to add on. Um, so I personally think that like not many people know like the importance of sea level rising because they feel like, oh, it's just the sea, like the water rise every year and nothing happens. But I feel like this has been an issue since like 2010 that people tend to overlook since like, um, like as far as in my research from my middle school, that um, there's this one time that it went on the news that this one whole island in Japan sunk because of sea level rising, but it was an empty island. So I think it's very important that like people are like looking, looking forward to things like this now. Yeah, I especially agree with that because I feel like Right now, there's a lot of time where like youth people have time, more time than usual to be on Instagram, be on social media. And that's where most of us get informed about like the stuff that we are seeing right now. And I feel like we have benefits to, um, you know, be, be able to learn more about sea level rising. Um, and I think sea level rising has been an impact a lot in this year. Um, I've seen a lot of um, movement with it, like protest. I know my local school did um, a protest downtown Novato. Um, so it's just, there's many things that youth can do to be involved with this um, sea level rising and, and sea level rising can connect with most, like many things, like especially Tasconia March. Um, so it's just important to be able to be knowledgeable about, um, climate change and sea level rising. Okay. So I actually looked up if my information was correct, because I don't want to give out false information out there. Um, the island that actually got, like, that got flooded all the way because of sea level rising was, a um, an island in the Pacific Ocean. It's called the Kiribati Island. Just, yeah, I don't want to give up for false information. Thank you for clarifying. Sea level rising is so important, important because, like I said before, it affects the community. And one of the things that we researched with Lawrence was that um, the canal area is kind of like the center, you know, Santa Rafael is the center of, of transportation because the highway there connects you to Richmond, San Francisco, and then you can go farther and you, you'll head to Sonoma. So that area is, you know, it's, it's a main point for transportation. So if that area gets flooded, we talked about how that will affect businesses, not just the community who's living there, but businesses getting the transportation. And I wanted to ask Barbara, I know she mentioned that um, it's important for the community to know about Tiscornia March so they can support, you know, the, the project. I wanted her to let our audience know how they can help support the project. Well, I think the first thing, and you, you two of you have mentioned it, I think, is, is I think you all should try and attend on Zoom, of course, the, uh, the meeting on the 21st, because that will have um, more information from the city, from the county, from some people that work there, as well as um, our engineers who, uh, who are working on designing the project. So first, I think it's really important for you all, but, uh, and the people that live in the canal area, 
uh, to understand the project and why it's important for them. And um, uh, I think that, did I answer your question? I, I, you, okay. So um, there's also really a lot of other exciting things when you get involved in a project like this because you can learn about wildlife and why the marshes are important in addition to why they're important for the directly for the community. They're important in lots of other ways. They, they uh, improve air quality. The plants um, um, produce um, clean air and uh, their habitat for fish. People like to eat fish. If you don't have nice marshes for the fish to live in and uh, at least for part of their lives or all of their lives, they, um, we won't have much in the way of, uh, of fish to eat or enjoy. And the birds, of course, are wonderful and fun to watch. They're all part of the ecosystem. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I feel like yeah. in like right now we have fires, so we do need more clean air, and I think that's a big yeah. part that can help us with that. And um, you did mention about the Zoom meeting. Uh, can you repeat, Santi or Lawrence, what time would that be? Um, what day would it be? And if you guys are going to give out a link, where are you going to post it? Um, so our audience can be able to attend to that meeting. It's going to be October 21st at 530 and it's, there's going to be a Zoom link. And I don't know, I'm not so sure where the link is going to be located at. Well, the link, there is a, a website for the project. And so okay. it will be on that. Or you can be in touch with me or the, the Multicultural Center folks to, to find out about it, be sent it also. Great. They're Thank the one who posted it. Okay. Um, this has been an interesting and I think a critical subject that should be alerted to all civ civilians in Marin County and we appreciate your time being here. Um, we want to thank all of you guys for letting us and our watchers know more about Discornia. I wanted to lastly ask if you, if a youth is interested in volunteering to help restoration in Discornia March, who or what website do they contact? Do they contact um, you, Barbara? Well, they're welcome to contact me. Marin Audubon Society has a website. You can just actually Google Marin Audubon Society website and you will get there. And there is a little place for you to you know, fill in your name and contact information and volunteer. Uh, it's a general uh, sign up for volunteers, but you can note or, or will someone will contact you and, and then you can say you want to volunteer for Discordia Marsh. Um, I'm sure the Multicultural Center also has ways to, to uh, volunteer. And I don't remember, but I think there is a, a, um, a link or something on the web, on the, the Tiscornia website. And um, I'd be interested in knowing, you know, what kinds of things that the, you know, you, you guys would be interested in, in doing. Right now, most of the work is being done by engineers because it's, it's engineering work. You have to have things safe. Uh, to, um, uh, you know, to protect the community. Um, but certainly in the future, we would have lots of opportunities for people to volunteer to do planting and plant man maintenance and, and uh, probably other things that none of us have thought of. More, more going out into the community like you're doing. That's a great thing. Thank you. Um, so we'll be sure to provide the link of their website below our Facebook video. Um, and we would like for our, our youth, if our youth have any ideas of what they can do to volunteer, please make sure to contact um, Barbara or Multicultural or the link that we will be posting below Facebook. Um, sadly, we are near the end, but um, before we end the show, do you guys have any final words that you would like to say? Barbara or Lawrence? Lawrence, do you want to go first? <laughs> um, just that, you know, I'm really glad just personally that I was able to have the opportunity to help out. I've learned a lot and I've met a lot of really interesting people and just gained a new awareness. But just, I think one last thing I want to mention about like the habitat is that I remember learning about like just the fact that the habitat builds on itself and there's a, there's a bunch of intersectionality between species and, you know, 
even if like one species is lacking population, this affects, it has a butterfly effect where it affects all the other species that live in that. So I think just, it's so much more than just sea level rise. It's like the habitat consequences and, and like the financial consequences all in one big issue. And I just think sea rise is kind of at the core of that. And, I just, and just understanding that certain issues, especially in our society, have like different angles in which problems may occur. It's not just usually one issue. It's usually just a subset of issues that spike out of one. Good for you, Lawrence. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of um, implications for sea level rise all around the Bay. Uh, because unfortunately, there was a long period of time when people didn't realize the importance of, sea, of, of marshes. And so they built lot, there's lots of houses, including the canal area built on what used to be tidal marshes. And uh, they're low. And that makes them people didn't foresee sea level rise. Um, and so they didn't you know, that they're more, much more vulnerable, the houses that, that, that were built on them, on marshes. And so it's important for us to keep working on it because it, 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 it needs, needs people's attention. And it's, it's, it's not something that's immediately obvious because the sea rises gradually, at least it has so far, it might speed up, but uh, so we need to, to make sure people are aware and, um, and understand what's going to ha happen in the future to you guys or you know your children thank you so much for being on the show Lawrence and Barbara and well thank you for having the show <laughs> it's great it's it's been amazing to get to know you and learn a, about the project along the way of my internship and one of the things that I've learned kind of uh, adding on to Lawrence is that no one is prepared for this because we're so busy. I, I've, I've mentioned this before, you know, everybody's working, going to school and you come home, you get tired, you know, there's not, there's, like, you don't sit around and, at, and go on the computer and like, I'm gonna search about sea level rising, I'm gonna search about. So it's, it's important, important that we spread the word and for us to share, you know, what the effects are because there's a big effect on, um, you know, what happens, like Lauren said, it's not just one thing. There's so many things that tied tides onto it. And when we were doing interviews, I asked one of the most important questions is, are you prepared, you know, to evacuate if there's a flooding? And everyone's like, no, I didn't even think about that. So it's a whole big, um, it's a whole big, there's so much behind it. So it's important, important to talk about it. So thank you so much for um, being on the show. Well, thank you for having it. Great show. <laughs> I enjoyed you all. <laughs> um, thank you all for uh, coming in and talking. And thank you, Santi, for adding your information about your, your experience. Um, we love hearing about our hosts' um, experience outside the community. And hopefully, it inspires more youth to do that. Um, we hope you all have a good weekend. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye, guys. Uh, Bye. Thanks for having Bye. me. Bye. Thank you the end of our show for the week make sure to catch us next friday at 4 p.m on instagram and facebook at tabletum ruin hope you enjoy the show see you guys